did debate, I guess, online with different people. Uh, commented on some other YouTube videos about the Modern Masters 2017. And I just want to give a perspective on just how business works from a player's perspective as well as someone who owns a local game store. As you can tell, we're here at my local game store. A uh, little bit of background of Gonro Games in Richfield, Utah. We are the population of about 8,000 in Richfield, and then we recruit another additional 12,000 uh, people within, I don't know, 15, 20 mile radius. Uh, Richfield's actually considered the, it's the largest city within 100 miles of us. So we are kind of a commercial district for maybe 30,000 people, I would say. And so given that, we still are an incredibly tiny uh, store for the population. I mean, most places to have a local game store, I'd say you'd have to be in the 50,000 uh, range for a, a good healthy population. Or just have a very, very gaming oriented community. Uh, which I would say, even though we're in Utah, which is usually nerd culture, that's the epicenter of nerd culture, that's more Salt Lake City than rural Utah. Rural Utah has a lot of farming communities. Uh, sports are really big here, like baseball, uh, especially baseball, basketball, and a lot of the outdoors activities. A lot of farmers farmer redneck type community so the gaming is a little bit I would say a disadvantage there so we started Zach and I started the store Gunro Games as just a, a way for us to play I mean it, it made sense with a good outlet I, I mean eventually I want to marry the two uh, Rogue Deck Builder and Gunro Games and turn more of an online type store so I can you know give back to the fans and just kind of kind of uh, yeah I know I think that's the the future of, of success will be going more online but as we're getting there, how we started the store, Zach and I, we started with very little, um, we had no liquid capital, meaning we didn't have any like actual money that went in the store. What we, how we started Gunro Games is through um, our own collections and just some savvy bartering and just a lot of donations from different people throughout the community. We had some cases donated to us. Some of the shelving back there that you see was donated to us. And a lot of man hours were donated to us to help us get the store going. Our costs are incredibly low, our overhead is insanely low, but I'm going to get to overhead in a second. I would say that we probably have, an, our overhead is probably around a thousand bucks is all, which is super, super cheap, which is why we're able to stay afloat. But I'm going to, I'll, I'll be talking about that, that's going to be relevant to the discussion uh, going forward. So I'm happy with Zach and I have been able to achieve. We have a lot of actual money with cards and product now in this store, because little by little we've been able to build up our... Our, our just our the worth of our store the capital that we actually have in goods and I'm, I'm, I'm very very happy that we've been able to achieve that uh, the store before us kind of had the opposite problem they took out ten thousand dollars of debt and then they never really recovered from that debt uh, currently Gunner Games has zero debt and we you know we even have some money in the bank account so that's good news good news we're, we're coming up on the the struggling season which is the summer, which typically is terrible here in Richfield, Utah, as just the outdoor activities and people not being at school, uh, seeing their friends in the hall, and then be like, hey, I want to play Magic afterwards. We, we really struggle. It's about half the people, I would say, about half. We, our events in the wintertime uh, fill up pretty quickly. We, we can easily run Standard, Modern Frontier, Draft, all those type of things. Uh, Pre-releases are strong. And the summer, it's more of a struggle. Got to do more recruiting and marketing and, and more incentives to, to, to have players be here. So where does this lie in to modern, the Modern Masters 2017? Why am I so up in arms about it? And why am I really, I don't know, I, I think people have been attacked as, as, as being a you know, filthy capitalist or someone that just doesn't look out for the little guy because I'm a big believer in producers rather than consumers. So a little bit of economic theories here. I consider myself a classical liberal when it comes to epic economic policies as well as social policies. I think that it's, I'll argue till I'm blue in the face about how the United States was, was set up with classical liberal principles, uh, especially the uh, Andrew Jackson, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, a lot of those were, were very classic, classical liberals is what we like to call them. And little by little, I think the United States has morphed more into a, um, a bigger and bigger and bigger government. And it, it's, the, the longer we go, the harder it is for like small businesses, I would say, to try to compete with the larger corporations. And especially in an atmosphere where we have like Walmarts and Kmarts and things like that, that, that can work on such low profit margins and can just stick their hobby 
based stuff within a, a, a gigantic store and if it's not that profitable then it's still if, if it makes any profit it makes profit so it's good for them so in my economic principles too i like to i like economic policies that reward the producer not the consumer because if the producer fails the consumer has no consumption and as far as how this relates to magic the gathering is if a local game store fails the entire community fails and they'll be back a little bit of history about Richfield, Utah. Before I moved here, I came as a very competitive player. I already had made a pro tour uh, before I moved back to Richfield, Utah. My very first tournament that I was, I met up with some guys that were saying they were going to hold a tournament. And it was at, actually the local food bank is where the tournament was held. And it was just a, a win a box tournament. And uh, the competition was absolutely horrid. It was so easy just to sweep it. I ate and owed it. And, I mean, no, no, you know. Uh, sweat off my face whatsoever. It was it was quite easy. I remember the very first matchup that I sat down. I was playing against goblins. This is back during um, Return to Ravnica era, and someone had a, a homebrew goblins deck, and he goes first turn elixir of immortality go, and I'm like elixir of immortality in a goblins deck, huh? Hmm. And I was like, it's a, so I'm like that's an interesting choice. Main board elixir of immortality is like well Mill's big. Everyone plays Mill around here, and like Mill and Return to Ravnica, is that even viable? I mean, it, it, at the time, it was just it, there just wasn't even a strategy on any any you know top tier. But anyway, that was kind of the the, the, the mentality. People had their own way of playing, and uh, having a game store here with actual tournaments has just made the quality of the play go way up. And I'd like to think that I was a lot to do with that. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. little funny story about Zach. A lot of you know hashtag blame Zach, my business partner. Uh, my very first matchup with him, he was playing uh, Slivers. And he pull throws down a Door of Destinies. And I'm like, really? A Door of Destinies is a Sliver deck. And he looked at me just as a matter of fact and said, I'm already running five colors. And I'm like, yeah, this community has a lot of work before it's going to be competitive. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So the, um, yeah, so I think that we've been a, if, 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 if Store Like Us dies, if it's not worth being profitable, and I mean, a lot of the work that we do here is, as long as we're profitable and having fun, Zach and I are going to continue to, to run the store. But little by little, it's become less fun and less profitable. And I think Watsi is the main person to blame here. Um, and a lot of people are actually defending Watsi or actually like the moves that Watsi says because it's allowed for cheaper products to get into the player base. And I know we called for reprints and I know we, we called for cheaper products. Modern Masters 1 was an absolute joke. How fast it sold out and then like tripled in MSRP overnight. Yes, I understand as a player, as a little guy, how devastating that can be that you don't even get to draft a set that you were looking for to do so. But I think the pendulum has swung the other way and the wizards is, is is definitely rewarding the consumer over the producer and i think that's a very dangerous dangerous uh, uh road to go down as again if the local game stores start to fail then there is no community and there is no place for magic to be played the advantage that magic has over online video games is you interact with people as soon as the game stores go away that interaction is done it's gonna be very hard for people to um meet up and play and yes the kitchen table players will be okay but for people like me the only reason I played magic was because of local game stores so let me tell you this is my little rant of wizards and this is this is coming from a more of a stoner owner perspective than anything but this is 2016 and now the start of 2017 has been a very tough year First of all, I think that Wizards needs to do a better job policing the fake local game stores. If you go on eBay and see all those $175, $180 uh, Modern Masters booster boxes, that's complete, utter bullshit. It's, these, these are stores that don't have stores, mo the majority of them. that somehow eke out product from Wizards, and if they can make a buck, they can make a buck. Now back to overhead. Why overhead matters so much is, is you got to think of our margins. I talked about margins in a, another video before. Why margins matter like crazy is I have overhead just to operate the store. Our overhead is very, very minuscule. $1,000 a month is probably a, a give or take is a little, just for the sake of argument for a nice even number, is $1,000 a month. When we buy from our distributors, we're getting prices between 58 and 65%. When we, do, we buy directly from Wizards, we get things from 50 to 55% of MSRP. So our margins on those type of goods are between 45 and 50% and then a little bit less from the distributors. So to just keep the overhead uh, alive, just to be able to pay to be in this, we need to do like what, $2,200, $2,300 of sales 
uh, excluding taxes, fees, all the other stuff, in profit just to keep our overhead and replace what we sold. And I, I, I the, the, the amount of people that just don't understand margins just baffles me. We have a few of our uh, regulars here that think they're the most supportive people, and I love them. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad that they patron us uh, and that they you know, do not do support our store rather than go to Walmart or go to eBay. But, I mean, I have one customer who buys cases, and usually buys two cases per um, set. And a lot of times we'll get like, well, I must be the best customer ever because I just spent $1,100 here. But before he bought cases, he kind of gave an ultimatum. He's like, I can get him for $520 on eBay, but I'm willing to do $550 to get him through you. And at that point, a sale is a sale. So, of course, we're like, yeah, we'll make $70 because I had cases at $480 a piece. So I'll make $70. bucks. i will make $140, bucks, sure. That's awesome. But then I, then you start hearing things like, oh, man, I'm just the best supporter of this. I spent $1,100 a month here. Man, I'm keeping you guys in business. When I just kind of shake my head and be like, that's $140. Bucks. That's actually not that great. In fact, we have a, a foil chaser uh, that comes down and drops like $200, $300. And the way it works is at here we give oh, – there's no demand for foils um, here at my store, and they're hard to unload them. Um, online, it's just they they have to be in perfect condition. It, it, I don't mess with foils. I don't like foils because they're just they are difficult to move. I'd rather have stuff that has a, a bit higher volume and easier to move if we need to. And I have a foil chaser that comes in and buys all the masterpieces and expeditions when he comes down to Richfield, and he spends a good 300, 400 bucks, and we make like huge margins on that. Like I'm saying between 75 and 85 percent. Because we're able to do trade-ins and things like that, so we're actually getting the, the masterpieces and expeditions for a lot cheaper. And it just so one day I just did the math, I'm like that three person that spent three hundred dollars on masterpieces made us a lot more money and helped keep us afloat than the person that spent eleven hundred dollars on a case, on two cases. And uh, it's just so back to now we can go full circle back to why I'm upset about wizards uh, about their recent product. So I'm gonna I'm I'm really worried right now because Modern Masters 2017 is looking to be a bust. Now after the packaging is out and we see people blowing it out for 180 free shipping on eBay. So let me explain that really quickly. For a store owner like me that is not a mass seller, is not a power seller on eBay, that means I don't get that huge rebate at the end of the month from eBay. A lot of people live and die on that rebate. So if you are a power seller, if you get like a super seller, I don't know exactly what the terminology is for, for, for uh, eBay, you get a little of uh, rebate back from PayPal and eBay. It comes out to like 2%. And when you're doing $100,000 of sales a month, that's you know a couple grand worth of rebates and that's enough to pay a, a part-time employee for us for just take modern masters for example we get 24 of them if we were there to sell them for 180 dollars uh we would basically break even on our entire tra transaction it'd be worse than if for the few bucks we do make it'd be worse than minimum wage by the time we would way worse than minimum wage by the time we package everything and ship it off and so it's just not worth it for us to do so if we we're to sell it at our store and sell it for 180 bucks, it's cutting into our other margins because we're competing with ourselves. A local game store, especially like my own, in a very, very niche community, a very small community, has, we, we cannot like compete with our own products. If we have profit margins, they need to stay at that 45 to 50% um, mark. I cannot take hits and give people like these massive deals, otherwise we're not making money because everyone has a finite amount of money in a community like this that they're willing to spend. I have players that are going to spend 200 bucks a month on Magic. So if I get insane profits off of that, or next to nothing profits on that, that's the difference between us making uh, our margin, or making our, our overhead, and not making it. So for me to sell a, a Modern Masters box here at, at Gonero Games and make 180 and make only uh, about $40 on the $140 investment, that is a lot worse than Question even selling seven. booster packs at 3 for 10. And it's just, it's, it's killing our business to be giving those type of sales. Well, now, eBay, how it would work for us if I was to put Modern Masters online for 180 bucks, uh, you gotta think that Modern Masters in those awkward uh, boxes, so I can't do the $6.50 bubble wrap uh, flat shipping rate that you can get from the, the, you know, even the free shipping material.